Welcome, Mel. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having awesome me. Awesome to have you here. What are we going to be cooking today? Um, so I've got some beautiful Ora King salmon. Um, oh, nice. These guys have been massive support with Food for Thought, um, you know, being what it is in Australia. So we're just going to lightly cure that with a bit of coriander, um, some wasabi gin, Yum. Um, and a bit of lime, and that's going to go with some seaweed, some forage herbs, and sea uh, and and weeds. Looks I delicious. Weeds that you picked up. Yeah. And have you ever worked with uh, ever worked with Mark before? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, well, you're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> have you worked with Mike before? God, God help you. It's my lucky day. <laughs> yeah, this is your lucky day. We're going to get the full recipe and, of course, find out more about the Food for Thought charity a little later in the show. Great to have you with us. We are in the Beko Kitchen. And welcome, Mal. Great to have you, you on the cafe. Thanks so much. So good. Now, we'll find out a bit more about you and uh, Food for Thought as well. But first, let's get cooking because we love a good salmon here. And Mark, are you pretty impressed? with the lineup of ingredients. Yeah, look at that. Look, it been out foraging this morning. Nice. You know? Yeah. Good. Cheap. <laughs> Loads of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> food yeah. cost. We look after the food cost. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so let's get going. What do we have Sweet. to do first? So um, I've just got some beautiful Ora King salmon. I'm going to whip the, the skin off this, clean it up a little bit. We're okay. going to give it a little marinade in um, some beautiful wasabi gin. Nice. Which is made very close to the hatchery where the Ora King salmon actually starts its life. Oh, brilliant. And this one's been massive with a little bit of wasabi okay which there's actually a little bit of wasabi growing at the back of the hatchery oh nice so this dish is oh. essentially all about the sense of place where the salmon starts its life oh no nice. okay so everything's from the same place really what does macerated yeah. mean by the way oh just like a little marinade oh so yeah cool like infused posh chef stuff. Word. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like what we do at four o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> a little, nice. little gin maceration. <laughs> and how, how, how long before you're going to use this do you have to do your marinade? Like how long are you going to cure it for? Well, I mean, we're going to do it pretty quickly today. Okay, but cool. So we give it a, like at least 10 minutes in, yep. in the gin and then we'll apply the, the cure, which is pretty much just half uh, salt, half brown sugar. Yep. And I've got a little bit of um, Toasted coriander seed that's just been smashed lightly. Okay. And some lemon zest. Nice. So okay. just a little bit of aromats to sort of complement gin. You know, we all like a bit of lemon or lime with the gin. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and once you've done this, what do you do? Whack it in the fridge? Yeah, so we'll let that cure for four hours. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, you can wash it off and it's ready to go pretty much nice. straight away. Okay, great. I like to leave it for about 24 to 48 hours yeah. just to like air dry and it gets nice and beautiful and the flavour really goes through the salmon, the nice. gin and the, the lime and the coriander. Oh, oh now we're talking. Um, and then, yeah, we've got all these little bits and bobs here to garnish it. So there's a little creme fraiche that I made earlier that's got some um, blitz seaweed through it. Yeah. Got a little bit more of that powder to finish. Um, nice. We're going to dress the salmon after with a little bit of citrus ponzu, extra virgin lemon oil, and then some beautiful uh, pig face, beach banana or kakala, depending on Ooh, nice. where you are. Oh, yeah. Some onion weed. That's one I made earlier. Oh, this yeah. one you made earlier, nice. <laughs> and I guess you went foraging for a lot of this, you know, yeah. the seaweed from Takapuna <laughs> yeah. up the yeah. road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's actually, as well, there's a bit of seaweed in the gin. Oh, nice. So all of these flavours mm, are going to nice marry together. Yeah. For everything, yeah. yeah. And, and great beautiful. story as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And speaking of, just tell me a bit about yourself. So, so are you a chef overseas or is it food for thought you, where you learned to cook? Uh, no. So I've been cooking for about 12 years. Nice. Um, and food for thought was born out of um, my experience about uh, five years ago before this all started. I went through a really rough point um, and I almost took my own life. Right. Um, so coming out of that, I realised that there was a need to speak and have these conversations. Um, and that's why we started doing these events to, to, you know, create awareness around the help available. And then also, you know, the things that we can do as an industry and as a community to, you know, to save other lives, to provide support. And, and food, you know, I guess is a great communicator. It's a good place where people come and talk. And can I just say hats off as well, because you're a bloke and in New Zealand at the moment, we are struggling getting blokes talking, yeah. opening up and trying to demystify the stigma. So. Um, Brilliant. And food for thought, of course, here in New Zealand. You've got an event coming up soon, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay, there's cool. An event on Sunday. Okay. So we've got uh, a brilliant lineup of um, uh, great Auckland chefs. Nice. Down at uh, Jamesy Street. So we've got Samir and Kyle from Culprit and uh, Nick from uh, Paris Butter. So they're all joining in, and there'll be me cooking uh, a very similar dish to this guy. Brilliant. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great night. 
I know, will we? And uh, great cause. Great looking salmon too, by the way. <laughs> and proceeds, of course, go to the Mental Health Foundation. Yeah. Brilliant. So, yes. Okay. Well, make sure you get a ticket. We'll tell you more about that when we come back and show you the next steps to Mel's dish. Let's get back to our salmon, cured salmon. Mel's here from Food for Thought. And uh, we've got a salmon that's been cured. We prepared this earlier. That's our finished product there. So I guess we need to do something fancy to it now, don't we? Yeah, so Mark's going to mix up a little dressing while I just cut the salmon and we'll plate one up. Okay, cool. So nice thin slices? Yeah. Oh. See how we go. Oh, I love salmon. <laughs> and what dressings are you using there? Well, so I've got a little bit of uh, soy sauce, some olive oil, and I've got the, uh, the liquor from the mushrooms. Okay, so you don't use the mushrooms in this particular mix? Uh, we're going to put that on top, so that'll uh, be a, a nice little textural garnish. Oh, nice. So. And look, while you boys are whipping it up, I wanted to talk about this, because Food for Thought, of course, is, you know, about the hospitality industry in particular. Why do you think there's so many sort of, well, I guess, depression and, and issues with hospitality workers? What is it? What well, do you reckon, I, Mel? I mean, it, it comes from a long history of... Uh, get on with it right. in the kitchen. So me and Mark were talking mm. about it earlier on. Um, and it was a funny, funny anecdote you told about that head chef message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, you know, when, you, when you're starting off as a young, uh, a young chef in the industry, you just, you know, you, you're there, you've got to learn, you've got to put the hours in, and, you know, it's, it's, it's hard graft, you know, and you don't want to let any of your, your mates down, so you're just there all the time, you know. If you should be, if you're not, there's no, there's no, there's no break to recover or... or or anything really, or no, or no help really. Well, and I guess long hours as well, and sometimes very unsociable hours. So you're trapped a lot of the time by yourself, thinking, "Why am I doing this?" Yeah, <laughs> little chefs hang out with other chefs. Yeah, right. in right. bars late night. <laughs> <You're> true. <laughs> true. Talking yeah. about cookbooks and yeah. Uh... yeah, well, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So I guess food for thought, yeah. only helping chefs, but also everyone in the hospitality industry, which is great. Well, yeah, and like we're going to move on. Um, because obviously hospitality is just one small part mm. uh, and none of this is possible without the producers and at the moment I mean especially in Australia and I'm sure it's the same here there's a big issue in the industry but it goes all the way back to the producers and right. it's not possible without any of them so we're going to start focusing on that as well because you know hospitality is this big spectrum and it oh definitely, definitely. so and when you say the producers are you talking about what the people that produce the food yeah, so the you know the growers, the right, you know the winemakers, so yes. all of this. Right. Okay. And I guess you know that that flow-on effect we don't see when we're sitting down having a gorgeous meal prepared no. by a chef. We don't think of a lot about you know the pain that the growers have gone through, exactly. the issues that the chefs are going through. We just eat. So okay, this is good raising awareness for everyone, really. Yeah. Isn't it? Good. Well, I, like I mean, it. it's not just the you know mental health doesn't discriminate. I no, mean, it, true. You know, it affects everybody. So and like. Farmers. And I think it's in a, it's it's in every industry as well, like we were saying. Yeah. It's just um, you know, I mean, it is it is um, quite rife actually in hospitality, and and no one no one talks about it really. Yeah. So it's great that we are starting to talk about it. No, no, well, I think it's brilliant. And look, we're getting some great food out of it as well. <laughs> so what are you garnishing that with? So I've got um, on the bottom is the the seaweed creme fraiche. Yep. Um, and then I've just. Dress the uh, salmon lightly. I've got some of the pickled mushrooms. This is a little bit of puff rye, um, mm -hmm. just for a bit of texture. Uh, and then some of the weeds, so the, the pig face and the garlic. Uh, these are like wild, wild onion blossoms or garlic blossoms. Ooh, nice. so, great names, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Aren't they? great <laughs> names, great dish, great cause. And it's been great having you on the show. Thank awesome. you so much. We will see the finished product very soon. And if you would like more info on the Food for Thought event, and if you'd like to buy tickets, just go to the website, which is on screen now. Thank you so much, man. Nice. That is awesome. Are you happy, Mark? Yeah. Oh, it's great, yeah. 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 It's okay, a bit small when... for all of us. <laughs> I love it when chefs come on. Got less work. Oh, you true. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing tomorrow? All right, tomorrow I'll be cooking with Mike, and we're making New York cheesecake.